Welcome back to the channel. This video is titled Homemade Wind Turbine and it's part of a bigger project that I'm working on actually um, and that's why I haven't done a video in a while. Uh, I've been working on the design of that project and also I've made probably over half of the parts already. So in this video we're going to talk about a homemade wind turbine. Uh, it could be used for different things but you'll see what uh, I'll be using it for. So the materials I used uh, to make the wind turbine here I've got uh, six by four and a half inch by one, one sixteenth thick uh, aluminum plate. And pretty much to make the blades I used my uh, Harbor Freight bandsaw and the Bridgeport mill to do all the work on these. Um, the rods that support the blades are three eighths diameter 6061 aluminum and to make these I used the lathe and the Bridgeport mill. Uh, to do all the work and I do have a video on the channel if you take a look at that uh, you can see how I actually made the rods, the connecting rods. Um, <clears throat> the main hub is a 3 inch diameter 6061 aluminum uh, that's pretty much the same process on the lathe and on the mill to do all the work uh, to make the final part. Now if you watch some of my other videos I do a lot of 3D printing also but usually I, I 3D print just to trial fit and test things and fixtures but in this case, I think I'm going to use this actual part uh, that I printed in the design. So uh, let's let me show you uh, what the finished parts look like. So let's take a look. So these are the finished parts. I made 12 blades, uh, and like I said, this was mostly um, you know bandsaw work and on the mill. And there's two holes uh, that mount the blades to the rods. And I made 12 rods, and you can see, like I said, there is a video of how I made these, actually. Uh, so if you're interested there, because there was a lot of uh, tricky work here, the slotting, um, you know, the counter boring, drilling, tapping, and locating this hole in the back, which I'll show you how that works and what it's for. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and put this thing together and see what it's going to look like. First step in the process, we're going to work with the hub here, and I've got 12 holes that I uh, drilled. And be careful, you know, I'll show you some drawings at the end of the video. If you're interested in making something similar, you'll have all the dimensions. But when you're drilling a hole to fit aluminum in, uh, if you drill it too tight of a fit, you'll never get it out. And probably if you don't have anywhere uh, for air to escape to, you might not get it all the way down. So the first step in the process here. Um, I've got set screw holes on both sides that I'm going to actually use to hold it down. Um, so first step is inserted in the hole and I told you about that hole in the rod. It's located at 30 degrees so if you see as I turn it it goes out of the hole and I'll actually put a pin in here so you can see it a little better. Um, Got to line it up. So you see a gauge pin in there and I'll get it in line. And then when I actually tighten down the set screw, it'll also align it better. So each rod goes into a hole and there's two set screws that hold the rods in place. So I'll go ahead and uh, put all 12 rods in there. So I've gone ahead and installed all 12 rods into the hub. And actually, um, I'm going to use stainless steel fasteners. They just haven't arrived. So the purpose of the, for this video, I'm just going to use regular ones. So I'm not going to install them fully in, on both sides until I get the actual stainless steel ones. But you can see that hole at the bottom orients the blades at the right angle. Uh, so, so the next step is to install the individual blades. Um, all i got to do is you know line them up to the holes in the slots. So I'm going to get it in there. And put two bolts in each one. So I'll go ahead and do that and we'll come back. So I got all 12 blades installed and the last step is going to be to add the spinner to the nose or the nose cone, whatever. Um, so went together well, no issues. So, so far so good. So let's go ahead and put the spinner on. So the spinner just installs with three bolts that uh, mount to the face here. Let's go ahead and tighten those up. Let's 
And again, I don't have the real stainless steel bolts that I'm going to use, so I don't want to put it on too many times, but um, I don't know if you can see it here. I might have to back up. There it is. The spinner, I think, really adds uh, to the look of this. Maybe, you know, it doesn't do much for the function, but uh, definitely makes it look cool. So let's go ahead and mount it on something and uh, put a fan to it and see if it'll spin. So I got a fan uh, pretty good ways away from it, blowing on the blades. Um, and here it is spinning. So everything assembled well, uh, looks really good. If you look from the side view, everything's running very true. So this should work really well for what I want to use it for. Uh, it has plenty of torque and it spins freely. This is the turbine assembly drawing showing you all the general dimensions. Um, the turbine itself is 19 and 3 quarter from end to end. Uh, and if we look here at the bottom, the blades are angled at 30 degrees and the reason for that is I used my indexing head which has increments of 15 degrees. So I had a choice of 15, 30, or 45 and I did test it. Uh, 15 doesn't work really well, 30 seems to work really good. So um, that's what I went with, and that's how I came uh, to the angle that I used. Uh, and the overall height of it, it's four and three quarter. So you can see the, the section view. I'm using two set screws to hold the rods in, set screws to clamp it down onto the shaft, and socket head cap screws to bolt the spinner on to the hub. So this is the rod drawing, shows you the basic dimensions, the angle for the slot, uh, and the bolt size and everything. So if you're going to make something similar, or just, you know, for a baseline, uh, you know, here are the dimensions. And of course, if you make the four inches longer, you can have a larger diameter uh, turbine. These are the basic dimensions of the spinner. Like I said, I 3D printed this, so I drew it as a 3D model and uh, exported it to the printer. So this just gives you some rough dimensions. Um, this I just freehanded a radius in to look good. These are the dimensions of the individual blades. Uh, you can see what I went with. Of course, you can vary. Uh, you know, do something similar. And like I said, a lot of you, if you have welding and that kind of capability, maybe you could do something a little different. This is the drawing of the rotor hub. Uh, you can see all the different features, the holes, the tapped holes, and the sizes. Um, so again, it's a good reference if you're thinking about doing something similar. At least it gives you an idea of the size and everything. And like I said, be careful with the diameter here of these holes if you're putting aluminum rods into an aluminum piece of uh, metal. Uh, this seems to work. 377 with the 375 rod gives you enough clearance for it to work. All right, thanks for watching the video. Like I said, uh, I'm still waiting for stainless steel fasteners to actually final assemble this, but it looks like it's going to work, and I think it'll work for what I want to use it for. So if you're interested in what I'm actually going to do with this, uh, stay tuned to the channel, and uh, you know, definitely come back and you'll see. Um, now there's different ways you can do this. Of course, if you guys have welders, um, you know, you possibly even make this out of wood or plastic. I did 3D print it and the 3D printed version may actually work. Um, so definitely um, if you're interested in what this is going to power, uh, stay tuned and come back to the channel. Alright, thanks for watching.